you're out. But this isn't over. No, it's not over. Um, we all thought that um, once I was released that I'd be taken from off the case, that would be the end of it. But at the first hearing, of course, the judge um, named me as a defendant and I've been involved with the trial um, through my lawyers ever since. It was really only, though, at the last hearing when the judge formally said that I had to appear or risk being declared formally in absentia. And under Egyptian rules, if you're on trial in absentia, then you automatically get a conviction. And so we're at the stage where we need to find a solution. I clearly can't go back because I was ordered out of the country by the president. But at the same time, um, I, the judge is demanding that I, that I appear. The solution that I've got, uh, that we've come up with, is the possibility of, of appearing by video link. We don't yet know whether the court will accept that. It would involve breaking new ground for the court. Um, but if the first principle of the judicial system is to get to the truth of the matter, then I see this as a, as a, as a solution that might work and, and demonstrate to the court that I'm not on the run, I'm not a fugitive. Have you heard that they'll accept that? No, we haven't heard anything yet. The court is still considering it. I don't expect we'll know anything until the next hearing on, on, on Monday. Um, but I'm still hopeful. Until it's rejected, I think that remains a possibility. Obviously, um, the, the first thing we need to worry about is, is getting the other guys off the case. And if by cooperating with the court, by um, giving evidence to support our position to prove that they, we weren't doing anything illegal, much less um, unethical. Um, if that helps the guys, the other two in the case, um, and, and my own situation, of course, then it's certainly worth doing. What would conviction mean for you if it does occur? Well, look, it, there are three levels. Obviously, the, the main concern is the other two, and that's if, if this helps them, then, then that's, that's great. At a personal level, a conviction would be incredibly difficult. I mean, it would mean that I can't go to any country that has an extradition treaty with Egypt, and that's most of the Middle East, most of the African Union, a fair chunk of, of countries in Asia and, and Latin America. It would be very, very difficult professionally, and it would also mean that I have to carry um, a criminal record. Even if, it's, if, even if it's baseless, that record is still there, and I still have to legally declare it. But also, I think it's, it's a problem with the, uh, for the bigger issue. Remember that we were supported by millions of people, literally millions around the world, by politicians from President Barack Obama on down, uh, diplomats, our professional colleagues, everybody. And they supported us partly because of our personal circumstances, what we were going through at a personal level, but also because of what we came to represent, and that's freedom of speech issues, um, the, the rule of law, the freedom of the press, and so on. And so if we, if we do get a conviction, even if it's on a simple technicality, it would be a repudiation of everything that those people fought for. And, and so I think we really need to fight this to the end to, to defend that. And for the other two, the conviction would be far more serious, wouldn't it? Oh, of course. A conviction for them would be devastating. I mean, those guys are in Egypt. Um, they would have to carry the consequences very personally of the conviction and any sentence that would go with that. We don't yet know whether there will be convictions, of course, or, or if there is a sentence, what that might be. But either way, um, that, would not, that would not be a good thing at all. For you, it's been a few months now, what has happened since your release, personally? Well, it's been, it's been a crazy few months. I've been running around um, like a headless chicken, really, speaking, a lot of, speaking to a lot of people about freedom of speech issues. Um, however it's happened, people are now associating me with freedom of speech, with... Um, um, the, the, the protection of journalists and I've been given a lot of opportunities to, to speak about those those issues. I feel as though I've got a responsibility to, to, to use that opportunity to, to talk about them. But at the same time I've also been doing a lot of work to try and make sure that we've, we've got the, the right kind of attention focused on our case because fundamentally there's nothing I can really do um, until this trial is over. Do you harbour any blame towards Al Jazeera as a network for what's happened? Look, we have to take a good hard look at how we wound up in this in this situation. Um, Al Jazeera has some questions to answer and we need to, to look at the mistakes that were made along the way. Inevitably there were mistakes, but my concern at the moment is over the, the charges that are against us. You've got to remember that Al Jazeera isn't on trial here. It's the three of us that are on trial and, and um, the others that were, the other, other uh, journalists that were caught up um, in the case and tried in absentia. 
Um, they were charges that were very specifically laid at the individuals, accusing us of working, of collaborating with a banned organisation, of broadcasting false news. We were doing nothing of the sort. <coughs> Excuse me. We were doing nothing of the sort. We were working with complete integrity. Uh, we were being reporting with balance, with accuracy, with fairness. We broke no law. We were mm. we broke no ethical boundaries. Uh, and, and so, we need to deal with the charges that were laid against us. Um, the other issues, I think, are, are issues that we have to address. But those are separate issues to the trial, which is ongoing, which is underway at the moment. It is Egypt that arrested us. It is Egypt. The Egyptian authorities that um, accused us, that made these allegations against us. Um, and that's where we need to fight the, the, the case. Right now, your focus, both. Uh, right, now you, right now, your focus, both professionally and personally? Very much on the case. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, there's still a lot of interest in the freedom of speech issues, but fundamentally, the focus is on our trial. Um, until that's over, nothing else really matters. Everything else in my life hinges on the outcome of this trial. And so we really, it's all about keeping the attention, keeping the right kind of pressure, doing the right kind of work to make sure that the court understands that there is no evidence against us and that the only conclusion it can come to if it's following due process is to acquit all of us, everyone involved in the case. Thanks very much, Peter. Pleasure.